so what's new in Coot? So uh, over the last year, uh, 2020, yes, um, uh, the major aspect of Coot uh, that was apparent uh, was that Coot 0 0.9 was released uh, in the spring. Um, that has been uh, in the fulfillment of a number of years of work since about 2015 um, and has uh, change the internals so that it works with multiple threads. Most of my time since then uh, has been working to to uh, work with Python 3 um, and that will become Coot version 1.0. There's still work to be done on that, uh, unfortunately. As a consequence of me changing uh, to Python 3 to be in step with CSP4 and others, um, the, the another set of infrastructure components have need to be updated as well, particularly the uh, library for the GUI and the graphics. So I've had to go back to school and learn how to draw um, from scratch again. So every pixel in Coot has now uh, had to be reworked so that it uses the new infrastructure. So this uh, properly uh, uses the hardware acceleration in a way that Coot used not to do. Uh, this version of Coot is uh, recently, as of about November, in a useful form and it can be used to be do, to do the beginner tutorial. One of the important changes in the way uh, the molecule is represented in Coot is that we now use uh, diff lighting correctly um, so that we can use uh, or represent the molecule with uh, specular and um, diffuse lighting, which improves shape perception. And my hope is that stereo then is would be less necessary because the ability to perceive 3D uh, and shape is improved. We'll see how true that pans out. Um, if you want to test this, if you're familiar with Git and building from source code, then uh, I'd be interested to, to discuss how this uh, builds on your computer and whether it works and whether it works with hardware acceleration in its current term. Uh, uh, incarnation. Right, so I'm not going to talk about Coot 1.0 anymore, but it will be the, has been focus of my time and will be the focus of my time in this year. Right, so 0 0.9 um, and there's, uh, has introduced a number of changes based around multiple threading. Um, this is what it looks like now on the right, uh, so that's a rather busy picture. It's far better to comprehend what you're looking at in 3D if you're actually rotating the molecule. Um, so, uh, there's the slide, these uh, components over here. Um, uh, of note that the extensions menu item has uh, disappeared. Um, it's not appropriate, it seemed to me, for Coot to be uh, providing extensions. They should be done by third-party developers like Global Phasing or Phoenix or CS4 even. Um, and so they provide those extra menu items and the, the tools should be built into the application or look as if they are. Uh, and so those functions have moved into uh, primarily calculate, draw and uh, edit uh, menus. So there are sub-menus of that now. 0 0.9 to 0 .9, 0 0.9.1 and 0.9.4 have been in, uh, incorporating, uh, adjusting the different uh, representation oversights that I had made with 0 0.9 and uh, 0 0.9.4 will be out soon hopefully and that will incorporate a fix to the uh, hardware stereo and a, a reweighting of the glycosylation module which needs some work. So, as I said, one of those things that has been improved has, is the Ramachandran plot, and that uh, is primarily as a consequence of the clipper uh, component on which uh, Coot is based. And that was done by Andrea Thorne and team uh, to bring it into clipper, um, and then uh, that was brought into Coot by Bernard Lokan. Um, the Residue type is more sensitive now or more closely parameterized to reality. So uh, we did not used to have pre-proline before or isoleucine valine. And so now we have the correct or more sensitively typed um, residue types. Uh, and uh, I think these are more up to date now than the mole probity distributions. Uh, 
but I'm not entirely sure about that. That's something to ask Andrea and Bernard, really. But that's what I believe uh, at the moment. A discrepancy because the dictionaries are not as up to date as the ones that are in CSP4 now. The new refinement um, is perhaps the major difference in uh, CUT 0.9. Um, atoms move dynamically in and indirectly. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, previously, uh, when one pulled on an atom, the atoms around the atom that you were pulling on um, moved in a way that looked as if they were attached to a rubber sheet. Uh, now, as you pull on the uh, pulled atom, then the pulled atom and all of the atoms in the environment are dynamically refined. So it behaves differently and in my opinion, uh, far more <laughs> usefully. Uh, a pink stick shows you the difference between where an atom is and where you want it to be. So generally speaking, you want to keep the pink sticks uh, short um, and, or perhaps hardly even visible at all. And if you see long sticks, then that's uh, in an indication that there's something problematic um, in your refinement, that coot won't move the atom to where you want it to go because there's a, gonna be a clash, for example, that happens and a way of representing that in terms of the uh, clash or the uh, atom overlap representation. They indicate the probability of a phi psi pair um, for each of the residues in the refinements. So you get these little put balls, uh, sometimes um, red, sometimes orange, but typically green, and you want to push them into the green colour so that they are in uh, high probability parts of the Ramachandran plot for that particular residue type. If you're interested in uh, rotomers, then we can have uh, dodecahedra to represent the rotomer probability too. So if we look at this picture, we can see that there are balls to represent the probability of the Ramachandran plot and dodecahedra to represent the probability of the um, rotomer. So this is, so the geometry mark up there that's semi-transparent is merely, well, <laughs> is a representation only of the probability of the model and the fit density is not uh, part of the color scheme for those dodecahedron spheres. Right. Um, so more recently, proportional editing has been added into the uh, real space refinement, and it brings back, at least to my mind, some of the flavor of the uh, previous elastic sheet refinement that we had in 0 0.8 and before that. Um, for me, uh, and hopefully it's the case that it works well for you, um, with Gilman clear restraints and um, the way the molecule moves with different weighting schemes um, uh, can be adjusted by changing the weights of uh, Gemma McClure, and I've got a video of that in a moment. I tried to embed them in the presentation here, but it didn't work, so I'll show you them uh, separately at the end. Uh, there's a new representation style, so if you use colour by chain, you can see keculization of uh, the molecule, including ligands. It's dictionary-based using a new ACE drug uh, style of representation of uh, bond and calculization information. If you don't have a dictionary for your ligands, it'll turn into dots. Uh, so that's a useful indication that it won't be able to refine. Um, and if that is the case, if you want to see what your ligand looks like, then turn it back to a more uh, conventional representation. I personally find now that I like the calculized representation um, for for side chains. Well, for, as you can see, we have phenylalanines there, tyrosines. They didn't used to be Kekulis. I now prefer them in the form that we're looking at here. We also have Curlew, which is Coote's extension wrangler, as uh, so that's what it stands for, utility refinement uh, library extension wrangler. Um, and the primary aim for that was that I could replace or add functions without needing to make a new release, because making new releases is boring. <laughs> Uh, it wastes several days. Um, so uh, if I wanted to update a scripting function, then I could easily do that within a minute or two uh, by adding it into Curlew. It also provides Act 1 I've added is uh, access to the speedrun. What do I mean by speedrun? 
Um, well, uh, the idea is uh, it's just like a, a speed run in a game. Uh, that's what it was based on. Um, then the first map here that we've set up is uh, that the we would do the tutorial. And um, um, there's a little timer there. And then when you have adjusted your model, it will run RefMac for you. Uh, so the competition is ongoing. Well, it's not really a competition, it's sort of challenge, a friendly um, environment to discuss how one can expeditiously use Coot for model building. Uh, what I hope to do is to take the video from the winner um, for a screen capture and upload it to YouTube and I'll over the top add a commentary to discuss what uh, the winner has done to be able to build uh, as quickly as they have. As I said, the competition is still open, so if you want to have a go, then please do so. The current best time is about three minutes, which is uh, faster than I was able to do it, so I feel challenged. <laughs> so I may have another go before the competition is over. But that is quite rapid. Um, I was pleased to see that the numbers are down that low. If you want to see, uh, I'll try it out yourself. More details, it's in the Coot main list in the archive now or the Coot blog. There's a blog entry for this, it explains uh, what you need to do. Right, uh, notable extras. I'm running out of, <laughs> I don't know how long I've got. Um, I About don't a minute. Want... A minute, okay, so thank you, Rona. Um, so briefly, uh, I, well, I've... each of these could have its own five minute slide. Perhaps uh, the thing that I will note here is that shift field B factor, uh, Kevin has added, shift field B factor refinement, he's given me a, um, a function to add that so one can do B factor refinement in Coot now rather rapidly. Okay, so uh, I won't dwell on the rest of it and I'll just move on to show you the uh, videos of the way in which the refinement changes uh, with different waiting scenes. So, so in this first case, come on, play. In the first case, we have uh, high weights of the local environment, and you can see uh, that the, there is some jelliness about the refinements, but not much. And you can see it move from uh, right to left and find the correct solution. Um, you can see that the uh, green dots there are showing the contacts, and you can see some nice hydrogen bonds, and, uh, comfortable non-body contacts. Um, so that, that may be what you wanted, um, but additionally, we can uh, change the weight so that uh, the local environments are less strongly weighted, um, so that the individual components are allowed more flexibility. So what we he see here is that the structure initially moves to the right, and each of those strands get fitted to the wrong strand, in fact, and after some domain has been fitted elsewhere, it pushes the whole structure across and it moves out of the current strand and into the correct one. And you can see that the green balls are representing good um, Ramachandran values, which is what one would hope to see. And finally, uh, the, the last uh, 20 seconds, um, proportional editing. Uh, that looks like this. So we have a, a model that doesn't fit. I'm going to turn on local distance restraints. So you can see that the local environments are being restrained now. I'm going to undisplay those because they're in the way. Now turn on refinement. And there it goes. Um, and uh, obviously doesn't fit. So what I'm going to do is just pull on the, a local an atom on the corner here. And you can see hopefully that the atoms in the local environment are moving around. Uh, but it's not influencing the rest of the structure, not very much anyway. When I turn on the radius of influence or turn it up, uh, you can see that as I pull on this atom, then the structures even in the middle of the molecule are moving. So all I need to do is pick an atom in the middle of the structure, pull it across and that moves out the whole domain and then it gets close enough to refine into position. And then all one needs to do then is to add side chains. <laughs> which is fine as long as you know the sequence assignment. Okay, Ronan, um, uh, I'll end it there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you, Paul, for that talk. Um, if anyone has a question, I don't see anything in the Q&A, so I recommend that 
you have a question for any of our speakers, please put it in the Q&A uh, and they will try and answer. Sorry, Paul. Uh, sorry, I was just uh, reading uh, Eleanor, <laughs> Ella's contribution or question, uh, which is explain why clashes ruin refinement often. Um, uh, <laughs> well, uh, they ruin, they, well, they, <laughs> they inform the refinement, I would say, um, rather than ruin it. You must be aware of them, and that's why it's a good idea to turn on the dynamic uh, atom overlap representation. As you can see there, the, uh, the dots and the pink uh, uh, sticks were showing you the interaction between a residue and its well, an atom and its environment. So if you're not looking at those, but coot is, then you can see some um, um, miscommunication. So the idea is to add in all of the atoms. If you want atoms or waters to be moved, then add them into the refinement. Otherwise, coot will use them uh, as non-body contacts. <laughs> Maybe you won't like that, but that's the way it is. Okay, Ronan, that's, that's it. All right, thanks, Paul. Uh